All right, so in the previous videos, we draped the front bodice as well as the back bodice, and then we came over to the side seams to make sure that they are balanced and parallel along the raw edges. Now in this video, we're gonna go back to the tabletop so we can true up our side seams and we're gonna balance the armholes and then do one last fitting back on the dress form. All right, so let's get our irons nice and hot. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out all of the pins again, except for these here at the side seams. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and press these all nice and flat and clean being sure not to stretch these or pull them off grain. And you can iron right over the tops of these pins and leave them in place. I just wanted to show you here really quickly that I am letting the iron press straight down and steam and then I'm cooling this off. And I'm making sure to not push or pull the muslin off grain. Now as I let this cool off, I'm making sure that the cut edges are touching each other so they're right back where they belong. And that's helping to get this center front back into a straight line. All right, now that this has cooled off, so what I have here is this is my center front seam. I wanna make sure it's back to being a straight line and that these raw edges that I cut are back on top, back so they're kissing perfectly side by side. And down here by the waist, I can just tape that back together. And the same thing for the center of the dart. Over here, this is the center of my back. Again, I want to make sure that the that it is straight again. And I can take the raw edges that I cut at the center of the panel and put them back together so they're kissing. And we'll just tape that down. So the fronts and backs are separate. I'm just closing everything back up so it's square again. All right, come back down here to the tabletop. Now, right now I have it where the back is on top of the front. And what I'm checking is the raw edges here at the side seams are still parallel. And as I come over to the center fronts, the center fronts are parallel. If this is not true for you, we need to shift and adjust this so center fronts are parallel and the raw edges are parallel. At this point in time, that location right here, which was the bottom of the plate at the side seam from the back and the front, that's gonna be the most important location. So if you need to make any adjustments, we need to make sure that location stays locked. So I can come in here and put a pin right on that spot through both layers. Now that I have this location locked, I can take my pins out from the raw edge side seam and also down here at the waist side seam. Now let's turn this back over so we can compare the center back versus the center front. Again, these should be totally parallel here and the raw edges out here should be parallel. If you need to make a slight adjustment, you can pivot right here at the plate side seam. Now also keep in mind that your muslin might be out of block, so check that they're still on block. So here I'm seeing that my center front and center backs are parallel. 
I'm going to lock this down. And when I come over here and I look at the raw edges at the side seams are also parallel, I know everything is good to go. Now here's what we need to do. Down at the waist, I have the front was corrected right here. And as I push through to the back, if this location changed on the back, we might need to take half of the difference between the front and the back. So down here at the front waist at side seam, I'm going to push this through to the back. And then I'm going to check that it still lines up with my back. If it doesn't line up and it's a big difference, what you'll need to do is find the difference and split the two in half and change your location on the back as well as on the front. For mine, it's just barely off, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this new location from the front. Now on my piece, after I came back and draped it a second time with my corrections to the dart, I have a slight change to the armhole plate as well as the side seam. So this is going to be my new tight body line. And again, just like we were finding the relaxed side seam, starting from the bottom of the plate, we were coming down one inch and we were coming out one half of an inch. So this will be the new top of my side seam. And I'm going to connect that down to the new waist at side seam. And then I'll square off the top edge to start the shaping for my armhole. Now I want to repeat this location here and here onto the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen my pencil and here at that new location I can poke through right at the dot and then again down here at the waist. And when I come over to the back I can see my new side seam. And then I'll connect that through and square it up at the top. Now I know that my side seam from the back matches perfectly with the side seam at the front and all of my grains are going to be parallel. Over here at the back I have my armhole at plate. I'm going to go ahead and circle that for a reference. Now that we have our side seams from the front and back, let's go ahead and take the rest of the pins out and clear off our tables. All right, let's start here with the front. All right, so now my side seam is finished, my front dart has already been corrected, and my shoulder dart, I wanted to trim off just a tiny bit, so I'm gonna take care of that right now. Do the same for yours, only if you have a change. Now let's come over here and we're going to work on the waist dart from the back. Okay, for the back waist dart, what we want to do is we want to find the center of the dart. Once I have the center, then I'm going to do a pin pull to make sure that this is parallel with center front. And then we'll go ahead and mark it with pencil and draw it in with our ruler. Now when I was draping on the dress form, I really liked the top of the dart location being at the center of the garment. But you always make sure that you never go higher than the bottom of the plate. Now we can connect the dart tip back to the waist to create our dart legs and draw your lines all the way off the muzzle. We can also crease this to just double check 
that the dart is centered. Now let's come up here to the dart at the shoulder. Starting from the neck edge, come over to the first dart leg. The first dart leg is going to connect all the way back to the waist dart tip. And then starting from the shoulder, going down that line, we're going to go down three inches to make this a three inch shoulder dart. And then you can connect it back to the other dart leg. Be sure to draw your dart legs all the way off the muslin. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and close this shoulder dart, and then after that we can true the shoulder line. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a pin through the dart tip. So then starting from center back, I'm going to come out to the first dart leg and pinch press that first dart leg. Once I have it pressed, I can go ahead and continue finger pressing this to get a little crease in there. And then I'm going to hold the pin at the bottom of the dart. And now I'll be able to come in with the ruler behind this. And I can pre-close the shoulder dart and pin this in place. I'm going to go ahead and do a little more finger pressing so I can get a nice crease behind the fabric. And then I'm going to pin this below the shoulder and above the shoulder. Now that we have these two pins holding it steady, I'm going to show you how to true this up. Take out your French curve, and what we're going to do is the straight part of your French curve is going to be over here towards center back. We're going to come in and we're going to find the beginning point at the armhole ridge and the neckline, and we're going to use our curve to match a cross where we had our marks at the uh, dart. And this is going to be a slight curve. And also the shoulder is a little bit wider here on the back than it is from the front. While the dart is closed, let's go ahead and add one inch seam allowance and cut this off. Now let's come in here and we're going to pin right along the shoulder line. And then we're going to fold the fabric following along with the shoulder curve. And again we'll pin this in place. All right, so do this with me now. This is our front, center front, and this is our back, center back. I want to take the neck at shoulder from the back, and I'm going to come around and I'm going to connect it to the neck at shoulder from the front. Now take your center front, and let's turn this towards us. This original neckline is going to be too tight up on her throat. We want to back it off by half of an inch going down towards the waist. Out here where the back and shoulder are crossing, we want to draw a guideline that is also going to be parallel with center front. Now taking the straight edge from your French curb, start that here at the shoulder. And we're going to slowly move this up until we can hit the neck edge for at least a quarter of an inch of a straight angle. And then touching this guideline at the shoulder. So you can see here the curve is straight for at least a quarter of an inch before it crosses center front. 
Over here, this is your center back fold. The line at the neck at center back, we're gonna leave it at the exact same location, but we wanna make sure it is square. Now we can continue with our French curve, turning it until it's touching the guideline here at the shoulder and also square for about a quarter inch before the fold. All right, so we just finished connecting from the center front neck going across the shoulder line into center back neck. And again, this is while we have the back dart closed connected to the front dart leg, and then this is the shoulder line heading back to the neck. Let's go ahead and take these pins out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the closed back dart and match it up with the other dart leg from the front, and this will take us all the way to the armhole ridge. And then let's go ahead and we're going to pin this in place. Now if you take a close look at my muzzin, you'll notice that mine is already completed. So I'm showing you the end result of having the shaping of the armhole. But right now yours is going to be blank. Let's go ahead and start doing the shaping together now. Okay, so together we're going to do the shaping for our armholes. I want you to make sure that your center front is on this side and your center back is on this side. And then we're going to take out our French curve and we're going to start doing the shaping. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to put in our armhole curves very lightly for the first time. And then we need to start balancing them and eventually we'll put it in more dark. So for now, what you're going to do is, from the shoulder at armhole ridge, you're going to start your French curve, and it's heading towards the dot here on the chest at the armhole ridge, and then touching along this straight of way, which was 90 degrees to the side seam. Once you have those three locations lined up, Let's draw a very light line. Down here at the side seam, it should turn into a straight line before it gets to the side seam. Now I'm going to flip my curve over again so the straightaway is here at the shoulder. And we're going to touch starting from the shoulder somewhere along this guideline, and then back to the armhole at the side seam. And draw this in very lightly. Now the armhole shape is not a perfect circle, it's an oval. And that oval pivots more towards the back. So the measurement for the back armhole is longer and the measurement for the front armhole is shorter. Now what I need to do is I need to measure the distance from the shoulder along the armhole back to the side seam from the front as well as here from the back. And I need to compare those measurements and make sure that the back is around half of an inch longer than the front. Okay, so take out your bendable ruler as well as your French curve, and we're going to start measuring the curve of the armhole on the front. All right, so we're going to put our French curve back on our first draft of the armhole that you drew a very light line. And we're going to bring in our bendable ruler starting with zero at the shoulder. And then we're going to measure all the way down to the new side seam. Now when we take a close look, make sure you're going to the new side seam where you went down one inch and out one half. Now when you take this measurement, you want to take the smallest measurement possible that's on your ruler. So for instance, mine would be 8 and 5 sixteenths. Now let's take our bendable ruler and our French curve and we're going to come over here so we can measure our back armhole. 
Okay, so now I'm positioning my ruler to have it where it's set at zero at the shoulder. And then I can measure following along the curve all the way down to the new side seam. Now remember, you want to have a very accurate measurement. So for instance, I'm going all the way down to sixteenths of an inch. And then I'm going to write down what my back total is. Once you have your measurements, let's go ahead and separate the front from the back so we can put these side by side. Alright, let's talk through the different scenarios for measuring the front versus the measurement for the back. Now in the first scenario, if your measurements, the back ended up being half of an inch larger than the front, then everything is perfect and you're okay. Now in the next scenario, let's say that you measured your front and you measured your back and both of them were the exact same measurement. What we're going to need to do is take away a quarter of an inch from the front and add a quarter inch to the back to make the back half of an inch longer. In this last case, if the me front measured longer than the back, we need to take away some from the front to make them equal and then we need to add some to the back and take away some more from the front to make the back half inch longer. Now I know all of that sounded a little bit complicated, but once you've gone through the process, it's actually not that hard. Let's learn now how to make the armhole bigger and smaller. So go ahead and set up your French curve on the original location, and then you're going to pivot at the shoulder and move the French curve into the body. And then when we come in with our ruler and take a new measurement, we're going to notice that it is now a longer measurement. So we've added to the back armhole distance. The other scenario is what if you wanted to make the back shorter? So you'll line up the original location and you're going to pivot at the shoulder and move the French curve away from the armhole. Now the distance from the shoulder to the side seam is going to be a shorter distance. Let's take a look at this from the front. So again, the same thing. You'll line up at the original location. And if you want to make this a larger measurement, you'll pivot at the shoulder and push into the body just a little bit. Take your measurement and check to see that it got a little bit longer. Again, the length of the measurement that you're looking for is to go along with the math to make the back half of an inch larger than the front. And here I'm going to set it up. If you want to make the front smaller, get back to the original location, pivot at the shoulder, move the French curve away, and this is going to be a shorter distance for the armhole. So now when I measure this, it will be a shorter distance. When you're making these adjustments to add to the length of the armhole, you want to be really careful that you do not cut too far into the body. For instance, here I'm going to keep pushing my French curve in way too far beyond those dots at the chest level. Let me show you what it looks like here on the dress form. So if you remember, this is the guide for the armhole ridge, and this is the shaping of our French curve. If we keep cutting inside of that guide too far, you're actually cutting into the chest of her shirt, and your armhole and sleeve is going to look really funny. The same rule applies here for the back armhole as well. You can see we have our guideline, and you need to cut inside of that guideline just a little bit to make your armhole slightly longer. But if you keep proceeding in deeper and deeper, the armhole is going to cut too far in towards her shoulder blade, and it's not going to work when you sew a sleeve on there. So again, I'll show you here on the dress form. This is our guideline. It's at the shoulder ridge. And if I take the shaping of the uh, French curve and I push it too far in, we're cutting too deep into her shirt. So this is something that you do not want to do. Alright, so taking a look at your dress form here, 
the shoulder seam at the armhole ridge, sometimes it's off on your dress form or the marking you have on your client. What you can do is keeping it zero at the neck, come out to the armhole ridge, and you can slightly push the shoulder seam forward to add to the back, take away from the front. Or, same thing, starting from zero at the neck, you can slightly push the shoulder seam towards the back. This will take away from the back and add to the front. But keep in mind, this adjustment cannot be more than a quarter of an inch in either direction. Ultimately, you shouldn't be making a change here at all because you want the shoulder to line up with the uh, armhole plate right along at the screw point and all the way down the side seam to the waist. This should be perfectly straight up and down. So you can see that limits how much you can actually move the shoulder to adjust for the armhole. All right, let's see what this is going to look like here on the muslin. Again, if you're going to adjust the shoulder by taking away from the front, you have to add to the back. Likewise, if you're going to add to the shoulder at the front, you need to take away from the back. You have to also make sure you're taking away and adding the exact same amount, and it can be no more than a quarter of an inch. Now, if you do any adjustments here to the front shoulder, you need to close the back dart and retrue that line to the new location, and you'll need to close the front dart and retrue that line to the new location as well. Now, I know that's a lot of information on how to come and fix your armholes, but this is extremely important to have these balanced. Later on, when you draft a sleeve for this, you also might do a little more tweaking on the armhole balance. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I have to do a, a little bit of a tweaking on mine, making my front a titch shorter and my back a little bit longer. And go ahead and do your adjustments now.